Hello, good morning and welcome along to Royal Ascot. Markedly different conditions to what we enjoyed earlier in the week. If we were complaining about the bad weather yesterday, well, it got a whole lot worse today. They've had almost 20 millimetres overnight, but we look ahead undeterred to day four and a brilliant day headlined by the Coronation Stakes. Jamie Lynch, we're going to, as always, go through yep. and find our Festival Five and try and... Uh, point to you at the way of a few angles and I guess it's very much ground to the fore this morning all yeah. change. And you know the Pride of Britain Awards I think sometimes they look in the wrong direction because you deserve one. It's raining it's freezing <laughs> and you have sacrificed your Mac for fashion looking resplendent in teal. I see you have not. I see you have not. <laughs> <laughs> Get yours on. I think I'll do the same. In but one thing's for sure in this preview show, we're going to mention it on runner aren't we at some yeah. point because they are coming out left right and centre understandably so heavy rain overnight will continue all day and normal rules don't apply today do they? We will do our best uh, to try and dig out the mudlarks, if you like. But we start with a look at the Group 1 Coronation, which is, of course, our feature race this afternoon. Now, earlier on, we were all crying out for a three-year-old cult to step forward and stamp his authority on the field. That is exactly what Poetic Flair did in the St James's Palace. Will Mother Earth do the same here? She's up against three different Guineas winners today. Yes, similarities are striking, aren't they, between St Mark's Basilica and Mother Earth and, indeed, Poetic Flair. Now, she contested two Guineas, was a bit unlucky in France not to win that but the beauty of today's coronation stakes as you've highlighted Gina English English guineas form Irish guineas form French guineas form and then the German guineas form because November when she won the German guineas she steamrolled the field from the front by seven and a half lengths on testing ground and suddenly she's very much on the radar given conditions today and her draw in stall one. Absolutely, it might be difficult for Phillies to make up ground. That's yeah. what Empress Josephine managed to do coming from the clouds in the Irish guineas. We've also got the likes of Pretty Gorgeous to contend with. Yeah. Just what excuses could we make for her last time and could she bounce back? Obviously she's the pick of it on two-year-old form. The only excuse is that it was first time out. Obviously you'd expect them to be readied for a classic but it smacked of a horse who needed that but think back to last year and her long running battles with shale whenever the ground was testing pretty gorgeous always came out on top didn't she so these conditions in theory should suit her well and is it a big ask for some of those unexposed fillies the likes that have missed the classics the the potter povers the the snow lanterns yeah. to take a step forward yeah i mean those are packed with potential but think of snow lanterns damn sky lantern when she was sensational in this race it was the opposite ground. It was really fast ground. And you just worry about her and Potapova because they've got two problems, haven't they? The class bridge and then the very different conditions from what they've faced. German Philly? German Philly for me, I yeah, think. Take yeah. a chance. So we're going to agree on that one. November could be the one to step forward. She's actually the top-rated performance on, on that runaway success in the German Guineas, say, time form. So we fancy her to go in and do it again. So that is the big race today. Now, we've also uh, got the King Edward VII stakes, and this features a clash heavily tilted towards the derby form because Alan Carr will no doubt be popular with plenty here because this was a horse, uh, Jamie, that in the Sandown trial yeah. beat none other than the derby winner, Adam. Yeah, the murky waters of collateral form. That's the pundit's best friend. You, How many times do you hear me say, well, it beat X, Y and Z last time. Yeah. But that's the easy way for pundits. And every race, especially three-year-olds in the spring, is just a crossroads. So the question is, do you see it as Alan Carr beating Adia? But only three-quarters of a length behind that day was your beer as yeah, well, yeah. wasn't it? So a much bigger price. Yeah, it was a much bigger price. And just a, something about that horse's action suggests that it might well relish this ground. But there's a really interesting horse in here, Gina, called Title. Yeah. High head carriage, wears a noseband. You can count on one hand the number of Roger Varian horses that wear a noseband, but it's got a high head carriage now. One last time out and it's coming up from a maiden, but on its debut, really, really testing ground at Newbury. It finished second to Alias, that mud lover of Rafe Beckett, who won a Haydock handicap by nine and a half lengths. And he just really mortared through that ground. It was noticeable. So maybe Seidel is one who can make the grade because he's got that, he's that off-road vehicle. Uh, they obviously think he could be because it's interesting when he was given a mark of 92, they didn't opt to run him in a handicap. I mean, Surefire sure sure won that yesterday. Yeah. Title would have won that by two or three lengths. I'm pretty sure off a mark of 92. Yeah. So it says plenty that, as John Gosden would say, they're rolling the big dice. Roger Varian's going straight for the King Edward. They are, and um, I'd agree with Jamie. I think that's a fascinating runner in the King Edward the seventh, our second race uh, on the card. Next up, I think we're going to the Commonwealth Cup. Uh, we'll have a look. We are, and of course,
course, the ground will very much play into the favour of Suesa. But is it a repeat performance for Campanel? Wesley Ward yet to score this week. He's come close a couple of yeah. times, but tried and tested. This filly has been here. She's done it in the Queen Mary. And she's done it on this sort of ground in the pre-morning, let's not forget. Yeah, good to soft in the pre-morning and seem to handle that really well. So the question with her is off the bench and on this ground. That's the thing. Wes Ward is really punchy. The sprinters generally, and especially her, he has no qualms whatsoever about them, as he says, are coming off the bench and firing first time. But it is that worry about this ground really blunting her speed. To win a Queen Mary on fast ground and then the next year win a Commonwealth Cup, first time out on testing ground, it's going to be difficult. But we know the Suez is going to be in her element. Four starts, four wins, all on testing ground. The style of her wins and the substance of who she beat. It's understandable, Gina, that she's favourite and you wouldn't be surprised if she went off more like 11 to 4. No, the money's going to come for her, isn't it? If you had to throw in a few other names, I thought maybe Jumby could run well for Reeve yeah. Johnson Horton, who put him up as her best chance of the week. She snuck in Chipotle earlier in the week, but question mark over the ground. Are there any others that, that caught your eye? Well, that is a really interesting horse, Jumby, because his handicap form is so strong, but he like many other horses, will never ever have encountered anything like this in the past. So it's a guessing game completely, but at least he's got the right profile. He has. That is the Commonwealth Cup. Hugely popular big sprint then for the three-year-olds. We move on a little bit later on to one of the, the tricky handicaps on the card, the Duke of Edinburgh. And could it be a repeat for Holly Doyle? Not just a repeat of her win on Tuesday here on the opening day, but a repeat of last year because she's on board last year's winner again, Scarlet Dragon. £4 higher mark this year. How do you rate his chances for, for a team who firing a few darts? Yeah, and... Essentially, he's a hurdler, isn't he, this horse, who can act on the flat, and that will give him some quality over most in that these conditions are at least familiar to him. This looks a deeper race, it looks a better race, though, and there are a few in there. One other ride that Holly's got, she's got a ride for the Queen. So far, companionship is still in the Sandringham, and that's an interesting horse because she was deigned good enough by William Haggis to try that listed race which the winner, Ashara, ran so well yesterday in the Ribblesdale. So just a few things there with Holly. She'll be hopeful rather than confident of a winner today. And that brings us neatly on to the handicap hot shots. And for me, Jamie, I'm going to stick with this straight Duke of Edinburgh because I really like Sam Cook. I think me and you Is it working. the form? <laughs> is it the way that he's approached the race? Or what is it? No, he came in with a good run off the back of the yeah. back of York, but it's that run at Chester yeah. where me and you were stood in similar conditions yeah. to this. The heavens opened and he got the better of Lariat that day in a handicap. Absolutely bottomless ground, yeah. handled it really well and he snuck in at the bottom of the weights there and I just thought it could be it could be a repeat performance. And the thing about Chester, you could tell about a mile out that he was going to win because yeah. it was so different to everything else. Most horses were struggling in the conditions but he was in his absolute element. So it's the way with everyone today in terms of their form study in that you've got to look for the soft ground rather than the form book itself. But my nap comes in the same race. Oh, we're taking each other on. Who have you gone for? Well, I've gone for Miran. OK. It is the Duke of Edinburgh, this, isn't it? Yeah, Duke, Duke of Edinburgh. Of Edinburgh. <laughs> Johnny Murta. Yeah, <laughs> so this horse, Aga Khan family, soft ground last time, in fact, heavy ground last time, split two horses in a strong handicap. The winner was first time out for Willie Mullins, joined the stable and was way ahead of its mark. The third horse was an Aidan O'Brien favourite. It looked a really strong race. He came home with a wet sail over a mile and a quarter. And again, it's a guessing game as to the mile and a half and soft ground combination. But he, to me, looks the right sort of horse for today. Yeah, we've got Ade in there, let's not forget, who loves the ground as well. A tritonic as well. Yeah. Um, a one-time favourite for the Triumph Hurdle back on the flat and he uh, could go well in that same race. Got to throw in plenty, got to throw a few darts at the Duke of Edinburgh. That's going to be one of the toughest races on the card. Um, but we've also picked out naps elsewhere on the card and probably already given the game away, but really like November in the coronation, as you said, the angle coming out of stall one, being able to potentially make all. We know um, she'll handle the ground and I think maybe the German Raider could be underestimated here. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and it's almost it. Raider Ratings and weights and measures don't count for as much as suitability and compatibility with the ground. And we know she's got it and we know she's got that style that's going to make her a big player today. My nap is the aforementioned Miran. I just think that he's about 10 to 1 and that price will surely nudge down as the more rain comes because he handled heavy so well last time. Johnny Murta trained. 10 to 1 then, Miran. Nice price as well about it in the Duke of Edinburgh. And November... That can't be 13 to 2 at off-time, can it? 13 to 2, I can't think. Can't be. I think that might be one that um, 
garners a little bit of support. But it's a strong race, isn't it? Um, you've got the Guineas winners in there, Empress Josephine and Mother Earth as well. But what we do know is, despite the weather, we are set fair for another brilliant day. You'll be able to watch all of the action live on Sky Sports Racing. Head to attheraces.com as well if you want to find a few winners. Place your bet through there as well. You won't miss a thing. Do join us back here for the race day preview a little bit later on this morning.